I pass each board through the planer, removing just a tiny bit at a time. Since this is end grain, I don't want the blade to tear out any wood. I head to the table saw and rip the pieces that will make up the perimeter of my coffee table. At the miter station, I cut the frame to length, then I miter the corners that will make up the 90 degree angle of my tabletop. I align the frame on the board and trace out the perimeter. This will indicate where I'm going to apply my tuck tape. Here I'm using tuck tape on the board that my frame is going to sit on. This will prevent any epoxy from sticking to it. Once the tape is applied, I reposition the pieces in preparation of the glue up. Once I'm happy with the position, I proceed to apply glue on both mitered edges. Here I'm using a silicone brush to evenly apply it. Once both ends are glued, I join the ends together and use a 90 degree jig to ensure that the miter quarters stay in place. After a day, I remove the clamps and I inspect the joints. Now I put the pieces in the frame. Then trace out the pattern. I head to the bandsaw to cut out the pattern that I traced previously. Once the cherry pieces are cut, I reposition them in the frame and get ready to trace out the walnut pieces. I don't really have a specific design, I'm kind of making it up as I go. Every piece I cut provides inspiration for the next piece. This adds to the overall design. The process is the same for each piece. Once everything is cut in position, I head to my oscillating belt sander. This will ensure that the joints are nice and clean and smooth when I pour the epoxy. Now I'm gluing the frame to the table using hot glue. This should prevent the epoxy from escaping underneath. I use the same method to glue down the cookies which should prevent them from floating to the top when I pour the epoxy. Once every piece is fitted and glued, I prepare the epoxy for the pour. 
Here I add black tint to my previously mixed epoxy. Now I'm carefully pouring the epoxy into the joints and the corners. If you like my content, you can support my channel by hitting the subscribe button. Here I'm removing some clamping blocks which I had to add as two of my large cherry cookies started to float. Now I'm removing the entire table from the tuck tape and I'm pleasantly surprised how easy it was. As you can see, none of the epoxy stuck to the tape. I'm going to be using this method in the future. I'm going to be using this two inch flattening router bit to mill my table. This was an extremely messy operation as I had to remove almost a quarter inch of my material. At the end, I was covered in sawdust and epoxy shavings. Good thing I had a mask on. Now I proceed to sanding, removing the milling marks, starting with 60 grit, and I work my way all the way up to 180 grit. In the left of your screen, I'm using a two-part epoxy, mixing it up on a sheet of paper, I'll be using this to fill tiny imperfections that I noticed while I was sanding. I use my handheld router to add a bevel to the perimeter of my table. This will give it a nice look. And now for my favorite and most satisfying part, applying Rubio Monocoat. As you can see, this finish really enhances the beauty of the wood grain and also makes the black of the epoxy stand out. This finish is really quite easy to apply. You pour it on, you move it around with a spatula. Then you take a white scuffing pad, rub it into the wood, and you don't have to wait too long, then you wipe it off. This is by far the most beautiful project I've ever completed. Finally, I'm installing prefabricated metal legs. I find that the metal and the black epoxy really look good together. Here's my coffee table in my living room. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.